They're never going to <coughs> bless you. It's live! <laughs> What's up everybody, Jess here. Welcome back to my channel. I am reviving this fucker and for my first guest, I have my girlfriend. That's me. Ha. This is Lacey. If you've seen me anywhere else other than YouTube, then you already know that I have a girlfriend and that this is Lacey. So I thought, you know what? Let's just talk about dating because it's appropriate and we could share how we started dating and then we could talk about all the things that we love and don't love about dating. Yeah, we made a list. She's got a list. She's got a list. It's very love crazy. lists. This is gonna be live unless I have to edit anything out <laughs> that's inappropriate. So for the most part, it's just gonna go up unedited. Yeah. Yeah. So I've known Lacey for about three years now. We've been best friends, we work together. And with the quarantine, we kind of have a quarantine love story. Um, you want me to tell it or you want to tell it? I think it? you should tell it. Tell, tell them and then I'll, I'll um, interject. We were at a sushi night and there was a lot of Japanese sake and whiskey sake. involved. And we were in the middle of Marina Del Rey. So if you're in California, in Marina Del Rey, there's all these buildings and it was hard to ping a location. So I kept, my Uber driver kept canceling on me. So Lacey was like, just get in my Uber girl. We're pals, like we can just split the, there's like a split fare thing. And so I jump in and then <laughs> we were supposed to drop her off first and then drop me off. And so we drop her off and I'm like, I think I've left my bag in your place. Oh God. Yeah, and then the next day, <laughs> That sounds really bad, but nothing actually happened that night. When I, you say the next day, people are like, ooh, what happened? Ooh, ooh that's yeah, a good tease. Right? You're that's a tease. <laughs> the, we, just, we just made out, okay? But that's all it was. But then the next day, we were like, oh, shit. What if we majorly mess this up? Because yeah. we're such good friends and we work together. This could be very messy. And Lacey was like, and I was like, if we don't do this, we'll regret it. So what if it is great? What if it's everything you could hope for in a relationship? We're really great friends. We've been friends forever. And you know, I am I have eyes, so I've always thought you were attractive, but you were married. So you were very um, non-flirtatious. You didn't flirt with no, me No, yeah, at there all. were no boundaries so I ever crossed. No boundaries crossed. So, it, you know. It was, that's why we became such great friends. We were like, let's just go for it and let's just see what happens. And then what we should go into now from my list is types. Oh yes, types. Because I have an interesting story about that. I would like to hear yours first then. Okay, well, what, with what you're saying, when, when you, you think about, people say, what's your type, right? Yeah. And you like spew off some things telling them what their type is. And it's like, all the things that I like, you are and I think all the things that you like in a relationship I am and then there's one other thing I'm gonna add but like in relationships for me I was like I was like I want someone that's athletic I want someone that's um, passionate wildly violently passionate I love that because that's <laughs> what I am and people don't get it sometimes I want someone that I'm sexually compatible with because it's sometimes that that's a part that needs to be addressed, addressed later. Yeah. Um, I want someone obviously that's a, that's that I think is hot, right? <laughs> I want someone like that. An attraction and you know smart. I want someone that's really smart, and that's what I used to. That's what I kind of used to think I wanted, right? Just that. And then as time went on, like those relationships didn't work out. So I had to add some other things in. I want to be with someone that's a caregiver, someone that's kind, someone that, that is um, understanding. These, these things were added. These, these are like the fundamentals of relationships. And when I say all of those things that I want, it was my best friend. And it's like, it's, it's like she was, you were always there, but I just didn't think about it that way. Yeah. And, you know, your type, like, really needs, needs to more be a, not just about how they look, but like those those variables at the end, I think might be the most important. Because it's on the insides. The insides, as much as the outsides. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and that's why I think, you know, what's your types? 
I mean, if you know me, the people who really know me know that I've had loving relationships with both men and women. So this isn't new. To a lot of people, they're like, holy shit, Jess is a mom. She's been married to a man twice. <laughs> She's with a woman now. What? Whoa. Pfft. I fall in love with people. I don't care about their anatomy. I mean, sure, that's totally a plus and it's awesome, but... They... Oh yeah, my type is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I have been in love with both and you just so happen to encompass all the things. You're smart and you're kind and you're caring and you're giving and you're compassionate and you're understanding and you're present and you're tender. I have said that to so many people where they're like, what is the one thing that surprises you about Lacey? And I'm like, you guys, look up the word tender. It's such but a weird name. But we're telling you to figure out your we're type. We're telling you to figure out your but type. But we're really just talking. This We gotta change the subject. No, but I'm saying like your type will evolve. It will evolve. When yeah. you're young, you're just like, ah, oh, I want it because they're hot and it's it's passionate and it's hot and it's passionate. But now that it's evolved. And then you evolve. It'll evolve again. And we don't even know what that, evolve. we don't know what our, <laughs> what, what that will be. So we may be attracted to these roses. We're, we in don't a, know. we're in a relationship, so it's important that we allow each other to grow. Do you know what I mean? To be. And then maybe even like maybe we'll grow into a way that there's even another layer that we didn't even realize we needed in a relationship. Like you said that you didn't realize how much you and you enjoyed being held, hugged. I love being held. And I'm a hugger. And I think that a lot of times the thing that breaks relationships up is there's not enough communication about what inside of you has changed and maybe there's something that you need from your partner that they're not doing and that they're lacking or maybe they've gotten too comfortable and then they're not doing anymore and you have to say to them I need you to hold me more <laughs> you know what I mean so your type will constantly evolve and you have to communicate that to the person because you either grow together or you grow apart yeah and like I didn't even know some things that I really like. Like I'm a 1950s husband. Like that's what I am. Like yeah. I love that Jess, anytime something I, I'm having a hard time with, she's like, how can I help you? What can <laughs> I do? You know what I mean? And when I wake up in the morning on the weekends, it's like I'm watching sports. She she gives me toast and coffee and water and orange juice. juice. So I like to stay hydrated. <laughs> but these things I've never had before, and I'm so appreciative of these things that I didn't even know I wanted. Do you know what I mean? So you're like in a relationship and you don't even realize what you don't realize because you don't know. Yeah, because you haven't been exposed to it yet. I love that toast you make. That's <laughs> all like, I have to say. It's from it's killer. crust to crust. You just got it all the edges. All the butter is on there and it tastes really good. Okay, so I think, we, I think we killed that. We killed it. We killed that topic. Yeah, we killed the types. Okay, sure. sexual compatibility. Sorry, there's an eyelash. Okay, here's what I'm gonna say. Is this is a big one. I, I, is it a big one? For some people, sex is not a thing. It's true, they can have sex once a year and they're like, I'm Gucci baby. I think that the, those people may have not had a great sexual experience in it's their true. life, and maybe that's why, or maybe they're just not sexual. Some people are asexual, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's okay too. Some people don't like, okay, so like, you gotta know what you want. Like some people want to be made love to. This is gonna get really bad. But <laughs> this is we should just do a sex one. We, we will do just but, a sex one. But sexual compa compatibility, I think, is huge too because that's a huge part of communication. I think in relationships at the beginning, if you don't have that passionate love, that's tricky. I don't know. Like there's, I feel like in the beginning of a relationship, either it builds. After watching Married First Sight, I see that <laughs> they can build a yeah. little bit. And then it fizzles. Because maybe you have a lack of trust at some point and you can't just jump into something. Um, but in terms of, it's like a chemistry. You have some sort of a chemistry with the person in terms of their sexual, your sexual compatibility. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you're magnets. Some, you know what I mean? And sexually... I mean, some people want to be made love to, and some people want to have sex. Some people want to F U U C K. <laughs> you know what I mean? And some people want a blend of it. And that's why communication is so big. And I think a big part of that is also knowing what you love and what you don't love, and being uh, able to talk about those things and being comfortable in your own body. Because if you can't let go and just be in your body and tell the person that you're with what you want or what you don't want or how to do it or how not to do it, you're never going to <coughs> bless you. It's live. <laughs> <laughs> bless you. You're never going to um, be able to connect with that person. And I think that's a huge part of orgasm. <laughs> is that's what it is. You have to be communicative. 
Like with tongue kissing, like certain people like a lot of tongue. And some people don't want it. Don't want it. And that's like sexual compatibility and like telling the person or not telling them and dealing with that. Some people don't like to kiss. Some people love to kiss. If you love to kiss and you're with someone that doesn't love to kiss, that's, that's a problem. hard. That's hard. It's a love language for and people, you know? I think some people are afraid of being single so they don't break up because they're worried they're not going to find someone as good as the person they're with. But that's like the risk you have to take in dating. And I've dated a lot of people. I just have. And um, and I, you love people for certain reasons. You have to figure out what you love them for. But at the end of the day, you have to you have to do it for what you need. And you still love yourself too. You have to know what you need sexually. You have to know what you need in your heart and what you don't need. Right. You know what I mean. And, and that like, helps with that. If you've got to know yourself to you date have to people. know yourself to date people. Yeah. Yeah. Because you want to go in as a whole ass human being and not have someone come in and complete you. They compliment who you are. The more you've lived life, the less you judge. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And the older you get, the more you've done. Yeah. So it's kind of like, I. that's why I said I, it's 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 important to be with someone that's understanding. You know what I mean? And who's lived as much life as you have. Because maybe if they're more experienced than you, than you or less experienced than you, yeah. then there's not a lot of compatibility per se. Yeah, they like know? can't understand what you've been through so they judge you on it or yeah, something like judging that. Judging in relationships is never good. No, it's it's horrible. Which is why segue into the next portion of dating is the whole like rules. There are rules, rules of engagement. There are rules of dating that I think that go unsaid and like when do you have those conversations? Social media in dating 2020 is a whole nother ball game and probably a whole nother segment that we should such a whole other segment <laughs> but it adds such an element of like trust because trust has to be the foundation of any relationship but it goes like I guess the unspoken rule is and not so unspoken because I said it out loud is that if you're responding to someone via social media DM or or a comment or a text and it's not something that you can say to them that if I weren't sitting on your, if I were sitting on your lap looking at your phone, then it's probably inappropriate, and you probably shouldn't send it because it's probably going to cause a problem. Does that make sense? Totally. And you know, I think I've learned that lesson in the past. Like, yeah, I've I've learned that that it's not innocent. It's boundaries. Yeah, it's bad. You just have to draw boundaries. We're both by nature. What's up, Aries? We are flirtatious by nature, and um. I love, I think flirting is healthy. I really do. You gotta draw about, obviously there's boundaries, okay? That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying like talking to other humans, like it's it's a healthy thing and, but you don't wanna cross the line and you definitely don't wanna make your partner uncomfortable or feel jealous, hence communication and hence there has to be some rules. <laughs> and sometimes there's like inappropriate um, texting, being insecure in yourself and wanting some uh, validation that yeah. you're worthy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why it's important to be a whole person in, when you're in relationships. And you have to know what you're bringing to the table. If you know that you're bringing something amazing to the table, then you're not worried about it and you're just like, whatever. Right. They're having a good time. You want to be able to go out with the person that you're with and for them to enjoy themselves and you're not babysitting them or holding their hand because you're so insecure that they're going to form a connection with another human being that you can't just let them be. And not okay. You have strong enough relationship that let's say there's something that's going on. You can say to them. You've had communication with them that you know that they can come and tell you to stop. Right. You say, hey, there's been this thing. There's a little bit of a connection, and then they go, okay, then probably not a good idea that you see this person anymore. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you for telling me. And and that's just the way it has to go. Yeah. Communication and trust is the found. It it is the cement that holds the house. Up. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes people ask like how many two other things that are that I think fall under this same category is like the number of nights you spend together, the texting. Well Jess and I Jess and I, it's not fair because we're in the quarantine. And you kinda have to quarantine so together. <laughs> now we've been together for ten years. <laughs> Like if we were dating, okay, I, I normally when I date I see the person like three days per week. Right. That's like a good for balance. a while. Yeah. For a while. And then you give them a drawer. And they have a place to put their toothbrush. Yes. Slowly. And then it starts to give them, yeah, drawers, yeah. toothbrushes, and all of a sudden they're there four days, and then it's five, and then you're like, oh, we should we probably should just get split a place. Rent. <laughs> we, should, we should just stop we paying should rent in both probably places. probably get a different place. Yeah. 
So if people are like, you and Jess U-hauled. U-hauling is a thing that I did not know was a thing. And yes. apparently people think that we're doing that. I didn't know that was it at all. It's called quarantining. We it's can't called quarantining. Quarantining is how our relationship started. Length of time in between breakups. Yeah. I'm going to say something interesting here. You obviously have something to say. I have say. a lot to say about this. Do you yeah. want to go first? No, 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 you go. Okay. So in terms of break, I, I'm, I'm from the Midwest, okay? I come from, my both my parents are still married, like... A vanilla background. It's like very So when I first started to date people and get brokenhearted a lot of them a lot of, I, I took like a year two years between relationships in the beginning like oh and so like That's what you're supposed to do is take time But here's the thing I would date these girls. They would break up with me if they would be in another relationship Guess what they right into the other relationship two of them are married and it worked happy. out so like after a couple years, I'm like, you're not supposed to go in a relationship, right? After a relationship, you're not supposed to. That's not what you're supposed to do. So I thought to myself, I thought to myself, Jess just got out of got out of a relationship. Should we wait? Should we wait to see? You know, no, no. I know several relationships that have worked right away. I'm fucking 40 years old. Yes, I am. I have seen life. Like, I know that you were in a, now you tell me about, you, because I'm just saying, you know, sometimes I've, I've had to uh, defend myself in this situation and I get it, but I've been in, I've, I've been in all types of relationships and like, there comes a point when you know what you want and you know who you are. And you just have to be okay with that. See, the, here's the thing. Um, I think opinions are like armpits. Everyone has them. And... I also believe that society and people would like to tell you how to feel and what to feel and when to feel it and that's not okay with me. I think there's three ways that you get out of a relationship. People either get over a relationship when they're in it and they're like, I'm not feeling this anymore and one or both people want out and then they decide to break up or they get over a relationship after the relationship is over because that person was like, I'm not in this anymore, we can't be together, and then you're forced to move on with your life and you get over it after it. And the third is that some people just never fucking get over a relationship and they're forever pining after someone. Yeah. And so you just have to take that into consideration that when you, when I decided to come out with my relationship with Lacey, it felt very new and like rushed to people and I'm just gonna live my authentic life and always be honest and like, People were like, you're so brave. And I'm like, thank you, thank you. But honestly, that's just me not wanting to be a liar. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm doing something that I'm not. And I'm not gonna pretend that we aren't, some, aren't something that we are. Timing to me is whenever you're ready, you're ready. And it really, you shouldn't give a shit about what other people think because they're not living your life. People came from my throat. People straight came from my throat. Yes, they did. And if my ex-husband is happy for me and is, is is supportive of my relationship and my daughter is and who love us and are supportive everything else is just decoration no. and everyone's doing their best everyone is doing their best life is hard enough on its own to like throw in something to tell someone don't be happy don't fall in love by the way every successful show in the world the bachelor the bachelorette like love at first sight love island it all has to do with love and relationships the because people want to be loved like movies yeah People just want to be loved. People just want some love. So if you know someone out there who's dating or who wants to be in love, just fucking let them be Go in love. Go for it. Go, Go for, for it. it. And let them love. Let them love because love is love is a beautiful thing. Love is love, baby. It doesn't happen. It, does, it's, it's, it doesn't happen. And when it happens the right way, it's magic. Yeah. So, you know, and you can feel magic. It's just, you just feel it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Love is love. And I think we'll end on that note. But I would love to hear what you think. Um, be kind because I do go through all my responses and all my comments and I do comment back so just that um, you'll see more of us what else do you want to hear us talk about yeah this is, these are real talks I love you I hope you and yours are staying safe and healthy and we'll see you next time bye